So in this video, uh, just going to try and give a bit of an overview of of uh, Android Studio and working with Git, GitLab, and the main purpose of this is to show uh, what would what would happen if you wanted to remove all your files from your Git repository and just start your project fresh. So you don't need to actually delete or remove the whole project. You can just remove the files within it and start fresh again. So the first thing I'm going to mention is using the command line uh, on Windows and Mac. So here you'll see that I've got uh, command terminal, just a terminal open on Mac. But the the advice that I'm going to give here is this much the same on Windows. On Windows, you would do a search for Git under your Start menu and use Git Bash. And that will open up uh, your terminal window here. You can use so you can use all your git commands from within this terminal and many other commands that are pretty useful too. So with that, I'm going to come back over here to the uh, Mac terminal window, and I'm going to just introduce a few basic uh, command uh, commands that we can use at the command line. So the first one uh, most people are introduced to is PWD, which stands for Print Working Directory. The directory is uh, an alternative name for a folder. So you can see here that my when I print working directory, I'm under users, John and Color, Android Studio Project, and my group project. In my file manager window below that, um, here I can see the, I should be able to see the same structure if I go to my home folder, then Android Studio Project and my group project. So this is an alternative way of looking at your files. If I do an LS, LS stands for list, I can see the folders that are inside this uh, my group project folder. So they are the same, app, build, gradle, same folders are shown there. Now the list command doesn't show all the details of the file, so in order to see a bit more detail, I can use list minus al, which I pronounce as list all. That shows me details of the files uh, in the folder, including their creation dates and sizes. And also uh, the a, the a parameter here is important that it shows the hidden files and folders within the directory. So the hidden hidden files and folders on Unix systems usually begin with a dot, or always begin with a dot, and they contain settings for different programs. So we can here see that the dot Gradle folder probably contains settings for, dot for Gradle, and dot idea uh, contains settings for Android Studio, and dot the dot git ignore file is a file that can be used by git. So we, we don't have an actual .git folder in this uh, in this folder, in our working project folder. Uh, so we're going to rectify that in a few minutes when we actually start using git. Uh, the other main other command to know about is the cd command, which means change directory. So I can change directory to go into one of the other folders. So if I wanted to have a look under the app folder, I could cd app. And I'm now in that folder. If I do pwd, print working directory, I can see that I'm in the app folder. And I can list the contents of that folder using ls. This would be the equivalent in a file manager of double clicking into the folder and having a look inside. So you can see the same files here that appear in the file manager. If I want to then, or I could do list al and get a longer view of the information and the hidden files there. If I want to go back up a folder, I use cd for change directory and dot dot means up a level. So I'm back up to the level that I was at of my group project. I can hit the back button here. It does the same thing in the file manager. And I can list the contents of the file again. There are a few other commands that we can use at the command line, including um, make dir, which will make you a new folder, make, make directory. And I, all you have to do is give it a name, and it will create that folder for you. And that appears down here in the file manager as well. Uh, rm dir will remove that directory. And I can also use RM to remove files and folders. And we're going to look at that a little bit later. That's going to become more important later. So RM means remove or delete a file. Uh, the exact same, now maybe, maybe some people don't use Macs very often, but the exact same uh, commands can be used on Windows. Uh, and to get a, a, a terminal prompt here, you click your start button and type in git, and you should have your git bash program available here. That opens up the, your git bash window and you can type the exact same commands in here as we use on Mac or Linux. With PWD will tell you your print working print the working directory. Uh, we can list the contents of this directory with ls. I can cd to change directory into the projects folder and then I can list the contents of that projects folder. 
uh, I can make directories, I can remove directories, I can remove files with the rm command, uh, and I can also use git, uh, it's actually git commands at the, at the terminal window. So that's just how it looks on Windows. I'm going to return to the Mac here uh, just to uh, continue with the commands here because uh, that's what I have available to me at the minute. And I'm going to show you that I've created an Android Studio project here. I've made a slight amendment to the strings XML file. And that's th this view in Android Studio is showing this folder uh, down here, this my group project folder. So uh, I'm in the directory here and I'm going, I want to start using git with this project. So I could type git init and that will start using, if I now list long, I can see that there's a dot git folder now within this, within my project folder. And that folder is what's important for git. If you remove that folder, git can no longer work with this project. Uh, so th it's, the, it's essential for using git to, be, to maintain that folder. So I've get done a git init, but what I'd really like to do is also, uh, well actually I suppose I could do a commit first. I want to git add, and I'm gonna say, use a dot here. I'm gonna add, that means that I've added all the files in this current directory, all the files and folders into git for tracking. And then I wanna git commit with a message. And I'm gonna say, oh, I'm gonna say this is my initial input. So it's just a wee comment to say what we're currently doing. Well, it's asked me to mention who I am, so I'm just going to follow its instructions and tell it my name. So let me say global user dot name is Johnny and user email is So, uh, I can do a git uh, status here to tell me what's going on. There's lots of new files there, so the commit hasn't actually happened. So I need to go back up and run the commit again. That creates all those for me. I can now check the git status. Everything seems to be clean and happy, git's happy. I could say uh, git log to see what's been happening, uh, what's the history of this project. Uh, git log shows that it, there's been one commit by Johnny on a particular date and there's the comment for that. Now if I've got many commits uh, I could I can run git log but with a one line option and that makes things a little easier to see if you've got a lot of commits and a lot of history for your project. So there are many GUI tools to show you this uh, to help you with using git but I'm constant focusing here on using the command line so that you have a better understanding of how Git works. So uh, that's me. I want my next step is to uh, visit GitLab, and in here I'm going to create a new project. Uh, I'm going to call it my group project. And I'm going to create that project. So with the uh, the project created in GitLab. GitLab will give me the instructions I need and the address I need to uh, start tracking or start pushing my project up to the GitLab repository. So what I want to do uh, in the terminal is add this remote origin. Uh, and once I've done that, uh, I've already committed my files. There's nothing left to commit unless I was to change something. I can now git push uh, my fi local files here up to the origin and the master branch on the origin. So assuming I've got my R SSH keys already saved up to GitLab, uh, I should auto log in and that should just send all my uh, all the commits up onto that project. So if I go back and visit my project here, I can go to the repository tab and I can see that all my files have been saved up there. Uh, that includes the .idea file the app folder and Gradle. So if I list the contents of this file, I can see uh, that that should be fairly similar. I could add the Gradle folder if I wanted to, uh, but it's probably listed in the .gitignore file. So I've got Git here, I've got some files. If I was to make a change then in Android Studio, if I go to strings here and say, hello, Johnny, and save that file. 
Um, if I go in and check at the command line, I can say git status. It should tell me that there's a file that's been changed. I can add that file uh, and I can commit that change with a message and I'm just going to say um, changed the welcome stream. So I've committed that change and now I want to get push it up to the remote origin. And if I go back to GitLab now, I should see, uh, well, the, the files will have changed, but if I check the activity, we can see here that that commit that I made a few seconds ago has been listed up there on the project as well as my initial import. So I should be able to see the history locally here as well. If I say git log, I can see that there's two commits there with the status of each. And if I want to see it a bit more compact, I could say git log one line. And that shows me the commit ID uh, with the just the description that was added the message. So that's the, my files are present up on uh, GitLab and I've cr my project is available in Android Studio locally. So the question now is, is what would I do if I wanted to remove all of these files from this project and start completely fresh? So I'm going to try and remove all the files from this folder. So you can see here, the project has all these folders and files. And if I check up here with git status, I expect everything to be clean. And what I'd like to do next then is use the git rm command. I want to say git remove all files in this folder. So git rm for remove and minus r means recursive. So git rm minus r and star for all files in this folder. And well, I don't really need to put any quotes possibly. And that has now removed hopefully more or less all the files in this folder. Uh, if I do a wee list on the contents of the folder now, should see that uh, most of the stuff is gone. There's a few files still remaining there. And what I need to do is remove each of those by hand then because these, some of these files are what was included in the .git ignore file. So I want to remove everything except the .git folder. I want to keep that. So if I go through and manually rm.ds, we're going to move that file, rm.gradle. Uh, now it'll ask, because it's a directory, I will have to specify the minus r option for dot .gradle. And I want to rm minus r the dot .idea folder. And I can rm the migrate project IML file. I can rm minus r the app directory, rm minus r the build directory, and rm the local dot properties file. So if I list now, I can see nothing, and all I've got remaining is the dot git folder. Now git status should shout at me and say that there's a lot of stuff that has been changed. I want to git at all. I want to git um, commit. And this is the message where I want to specify that I've done uh, deleted everything starting fresh again. So I've committed that and I want to now git push that up to my remote. So over here in GitLab in the web browser, I can see these are the files that were currently there or were there previously. And if I now refresh this page, I can see that there's nothing no files at all in my git project if i was to check my commits we can see that i have done a few things in the past and those commits still exist there is still files under those commits all my old files but i've now removed everything and started fresh i've just deleted any files and folders that were in the git project but i kept the dot git folder it's important to keep that dot git folder because it retains all your history so we can see that everything's empty in here again. And what I could do now is just start recreating files and folders and recreating the project. So what I want to do here in Android Studio is create a new project. I'm going to call it my group project again. I suppose I could call it my group project too. Yeah. And come on and just finish that up. So back here, 
I can see under Android Studio I've got My Group Project 2 and I can see that Android Studio has created all its normal files and folders that it uses to manage itself. If I uh, move into that folder, let's see, in my print working directory, I'm currently in the old project folder, so I've got my new project is this one, my group project too, so I'm going to CD, change directory into my group project two. And I can see all the Android Studio files are in there. The problem is for me that uh, this is not the same project as up on the uh, GitLab repository. So if I just get GitLab back up again, so we can see up here, this is empty, there's nothing happening here. Uh, and what I need is this address. I need to start using Git again. Like so I'm going to say I want to Git init. So that, if I list now, I should see there's a .git folder here that's tracking everything I do again. And I want to git uh, remote add origin. And then I paste the, oh, whoops, made a mistake there. Git remote add origin. And over here, just copy that, paste it in command line and so the problem would be that I've now got these files in my project folder and uh, my GitLab project up here on the remote is not expecting uh, all these files so what I need to do first is git pull I want to pull down from the origin origin stands here and it stands for our GitLab project or get our ECS GitLab and we're pulling from the master branch. Uh, I could put a comment in there. And uh, now I want to get push all of these changes back up again to origin master. those files have been pushed up there and now uh, I should be able to go visit the repository and I can see that all my files are uploaded again. I'm working fresh under my group project 2 and I can go back to Android Studio, start making my changes here again and I can either use the uh, Git tools within, uh, within Android Studio or I can use them command line. Each time I make changes I can Git add the files so um, I was in here and changed the strings file. I could say my group project. Okay, save that file over here. I can, if I say get status, it will show me that there's stuff there that has not yet been added. I can get add dot for all the files in the current directory. I can get commit dot change. and then I can get push that up to origin master and check its status everything's okay and if I go back to moment back to my web browser I can see that uh, on the commits uh, I remember the project name so hopefully that's not too complicated uh, the main thing to remember is that you can git remove recursively all the files in your current project using that and then what we've got to do is then try and uh, synchronize that with the remote contents up in GitLab. Um, let me know if there's any other questions and I'll see if I can try and make more videos to try and clarify things. But I hope that helps people who get stuck in their GitLab projects and want to start fresh.